Okay, everybody. KMO here. I know it's been a while. <laughs> I got other things to do, other media to create. Anyway, I thought I'd just step outside real quick and um, shoot a video on the topic of should schools reopen in the fall. Now, I am creating an audiobook for a friend. Uh, Vladimir J. Putin wrote a book about American exceptionalism, and just this morning I recorded the chapter uh, on public education. And, you know, in addition to reading it repeatedly for the recording, I also edited it. So I'm very familiar with the content of that chapter right now, and it's fresh in my mind. And his contention is that the U.S. educational system is doing exactly what it is designed to do, which is to basically make sure it's it has a cap on potential social mobility it is to make sure that students you know in whatever variety of uh, american education they partake in replicate the social status of their parents so do i agree with that well it certainly seems to be the effect whether it's the uh the intention you know it's kind of hard in a system, like an economy or a governmental system, or, you know, the two overlap, of course, and throw in education, uh, the system itself has its own momentum, and you can say it has its own agenda, even if its agenda is not one that anybody who participates in it actually shares consciously. You know, like you can have uh, corporate CEOs who really, you know, they feel bad about the things their company does, but they also know that if they take a stand, the shareholders will pitch them out and replace them with somebody who will do what needs doing, you know, and what needs doing is maximizing the return of the shareholders. So is school meant to tamp down or clamp down on potential social mobility? I don't think very many people explicitly wanted it to be that way. And certainly they haven't, you know, expressed that intention through explicit marching orders to school administrators around the country but that does seem to be you know what it's good for and that does seem to be the effect so whether or not anybody specifically holds that intention and i think some people do hold that intention but not many uh the the system as a whole expresses that intention which is a bunch of gobbledygook i realize so should kids have to go back to school in the fall Maybe that's the wrong way to phrase it, have to. Um, the question is, should schools reopen? Should kids be you know, congregating every day, swapping viruses and then taking them home at night to their families? Well, you know, the one function, and you'd be really hard pressed to deny that this is an, an intended function of public schooling in this day and age is, is daycare. Basically, it, it allows parents a certain window every day in which they don't have to be looking after their kids or they don't have to be paying somebody else to do it. You know, the public educational system does that for them. It keeps their kids in a fairly safe environment, a fairly controlled, structured environment for a good part of the day so that the parents can go to work. <clears throat> if parents aren't working because they are at home, do they need that daycare? Do they need, you know, the public schools to do that for them? I would argue yes. <laughs> you know, that being at home with your kids all day, every day. I mean, I've been in my apartment with, you know, my kids separately. First, my youngest son, I had him here for a month. Now my oldest son is here. And to me, it is a novelty. You know, to me, it is a rare treat to be able to spend that much time with them. But my situation is not the norm. And I think for a lot of people, you know, even if they themselves can't go back to work, just to have their kids go off to school for eight hours every day would be a relief. My, my reasoning here seems to assume, and I, I think it does assume, I will just express that I think that school is a waste of time beyond like fifth grade. You know, once kids know how to read and write and spell and do basic mathematics, I think school becomes, you know, intentionally a huge time filler and I you know in high school I learned how to type touch type in a typing class uh, I took a course called um, well it was a English course grammar and syntax I think was the name of the course and it taught me to you know, diagram sentences which I think is useful to me but most of my education you know most of what I know most of my working vocabulary 
comes from my own extracurricular self-guided reading that I did outside of school. Now I realize even at the time, and this is pre-internet, you know, I wasn't typical. And now even I don't read books. <laughs> I mean, I listen to audiobooks and if if somebody sends me a book, you know, then they there is no audiobook of their book, but they want me to interview them and I'm interested, then I'll read parts of books. But it's been forever since I sat down and just read a paper physical book cover to cover. That's an aside. Should kids be going back to school in the fall? I think for young kids, yes. If they're still learning the basic things, you know, the basic competencies that public education does rather well, teaching them to read, write, do basic mathematics, you know, some basic uh, social conditioning, <laughs> providing them with some social uh, competency, yeah, that's great. Those kids should go back to school. For middle school or junior high and high school, those institutions are basically daycare. They, they serve a dual function. You know, they allow parents some time to go and do some income generating activity every day without having to pay for childcare. And they also keep those kids out of the workforce. You know, they keep them from competing with their parents and older siblings uh, for jobs, which the daycare function is legitimate keeping kids out of the workforce. I think for people who are already employed or for adults who are struggling to find, you know, sustainable employment, because lots of people are unsustainably employed, you know, they, their job simply does not provide them with what they need to live. Keeping kids out of the workforce, I guess, is beneficial in that respect. But at the same time, the longer you keep them out of the workforce, the longer it is before they go out into the world and, you know, trade their time and energy and skills and inventiveness for money, the more they are going to fear that time as it comes and the more they are going to try to, you know, hide. But, you know, all of this, I think, is, is an outgrowth of one of the primary points of malaise for our civilization and our culture right now. And that is that, you know, we talk about automation and robots stealing jobs as if it's something that's going to happen in the future, but it's been happening for decades. And we have long since passed the point where we need everybody to labor in order to produce enough food, shelter, and clothing to go around. And yet we have a morality, and a morality which is, you know, publicly endorsed by people from across the, you know, the spectrum of political ideas which is allowed to be expressed. And of course, you know, the, the part of the political spectrum or the idea, the spectrum of ideas which is allowed to be expressed and endorsed in public conversation is a tiny, tiny fraction of the whole. There are lots of things you just can't say. And one of the things you just can't say right now is that not everybody has to work in order to provide everybody with what they need to live. And the idea that people who aren't working should be denied the things they need to live in order to motivate them to work and to keep the workforce you know, motivated to continue churning out new wealth that can be captured by the capitalists. And I'm not a, an avowed anti-capitalist. It's just, you know, that language makes sense to me right now. The attitude that we need everybody to be working and that people who aren't working are morally deficient and deserve to suffer and deserve to be humiliated and that their suffering and their humiliation is evidence of a moral system that is working properly, that attitude has long been, you know, an anchor around our necks and it's, it's getting worse all the time. The effects of it are getting worse all the time. And yet I do acknowledge, I do recognize and admit that people who are not required to do anything in order to, you know, for their own upkeep, it's really difficult for them to find the, the motivation and the structure and the guidance to actually develop their skills, to actually cultivate themselves, you know, as human beings with a wide, a wide variety of capacities. It is so easy in this era of, you know, hyper-professional distraction social media platforms designed to keep you engaged on the platform by, you know, zinging your neurology and rewarding you second to second, you know, for getting pissed off or for feeling self-righteous or for signaling to people who agree with you that you are among the elect, you know, that you are among those who are worthy and that those who disagree with you are unworthy. All of that can take up your time. I mean, it can fill your days, but those are not days well spent. And the end product is antipathy. You know, it is uh, a hatred between different classes with, you know, different subclasses or different uh, tribes within the working class, which 
ultimately just prevent them from forming common cause and demanding a change in the system which exploits them. So should kids have to go back in the school, go back to school in the fall? <laughs> That's the question I'm supposed to be addressing. Um, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it does not matter. Kids who are still in elementary school, they need to be attended to. Once you're into middle school and high school, you're really just biding your time. You are staying out of other people's way. That is your job. You know, maybe you'll be going to college, but most people who go to college aren't going there to do anything which is actually essential. Everybody is looking for some way to generate new economic activity, which is to say, fill a need which, you know, right now isn't even a need. And of course, you know, that is a possible thing. We all consider internet access now a necessity, right? But I grew up without it. Didn't hurt me any, except I wasn't missing out on anything because nobody else had it either, you know? Anyway, should kids have to go back to school in the fall? It would be nice for the parents if the parents had the opportunity, if they, you know, had that, um, that scheduled daily break. I think that is the primary value of school right now. And, you know, that value remains, even in uh, the coronavirus pandemic lockdown countermeasures. All right. I've said more than I intended to. I will talk to you again later.